usefulness or of DBS for psychiatric disorders? At the moment, I don't think we can uh, really say that uh, DBS is useful for psychiatric disorders. Very few patients have been um, implanted with DBS for psychiatric indications. In depression, it would be about 100. For OCD, it would be about 300 patients. Um, this is not a database which is enough to establish broad-based usefulness in psychiatry. But right now, we have a signal that this therapy might be developed in, in to something really revolutionary for patients with very severe treatment-resistant disorders because in the case of depression, f at least 50% of these very, very severely disordered patients respond to the treatment. And it might very well be that five years down the road, um, DPS can be offered as a clinical al alternative exactly for these patients. Um, on this road, we still have to do lots of homework. We need to um, establish large multi-centered randomized controlled trials in order to really prove the efficacy of the therapy. We need to find out what patients are most likely to respond. We need to look for predictive factors. So there's still a lot to do. But um, to take this line up again, I think depression, uh, DBS at least has the potential to become a very, very useful treatment. Professor Scheffler, can DBS be a real widespread treatment for depression or you think will be just in the area of uh, treatment resistant depression? That DBS will at least for a long time be limited to those patients who did not respond. But th that's a really big thing because these are patients which for years, for tens of years, for decades, suffer from the worst disease there is, major depression. And they have a hope of responding to this treatment. And we speak about a rather large uh, number of patients. Today it's assumed in the literature that about 10% of all patients afflicted with depression are treatment resistant. And these patients might ultimately profit from DBS. And please don't forget DBS is an invasive treatment. It needs brain surgery. It's not an aggressive treatment. We have very favorable side effect data, but it is an invasive treatment, expensive. And um, on the other hand side, it's very important to notice that those patients in our group, which we studied, who are slightly less treatment resistant, who are younger, who have less tr failed treatment trials, have a better chance of responding. Today we seem to know that depression is a chronic disease which changes the brain structurally along its path. And it might well be that if you had a depression for long enough time, it's very hard to treat it. And it might well be that those patients who do not respond in our study are just uh, beyond the point of intervention. And there we need a discussion at what point ultimately uh, DBS should be uh, offered as a treatment to patients with depression. But I think for a long, long time, when it's entering the realm of clinical usability, it will be restricted to extremely treatment-resistant patients. What are the major ethical concerns with respect to the cases you just explained? There are obviously many important ethical concerns. We are speaking about psychiatry, Psychiatry is a particularly sensitive area when it comes to interventional treatments. So we need to carefully think about how are patients selected for this treatment? What are their motives? One of the most important uh, problems is DPS given in a patient who suffered for, let's say, 20 years from depression might change the life in a very rapid and, uh, and deep fashion. And we need to be clear whether patients know what this change in situation means. If you look at it superficially, depression might get better. Yeah, this must be a good outcome. But there are many unexpected outcomes. What does it mean if you suddenly have to get up in the morning? You can st cannot stay in bed. You need to get up, get up 
you need to face your day, you need to f face your daily obligations. Um, this is a big change in the life of patients. And we need to educate our patients about these unexpected outcomes, and then we need to help them cope with these demands. These are rather unusual problems in psychiatry where we have very slow changes, usually in symptomatology. With DBS, it can be rather rapid. Another big problem, in my opinion, is the discipline of publication, and this is both in the public media and in the scientific media. Very often, uh, great outcomes are portrayed in the public media. You see a patient before and after treatment, and people see completely changed person, wonderful life, and this raises false expectations, and it plays with the hope of patients. So we need to educate um, media journalists that there are bad outcomes too, like non-response. We have never seen a bad outcome in terms of worsening of uh, symptom symptoms, but there are many patients who have not their hopes fulfilled, and this need to needs to, portrayed, uh, to be portrayed too. Very different in the scientific publications. Right now we are seeing tons of single case reports which are published everywhere, w a DBS for some weird psychiatric indication, favorable outcome, and this is not adding much to the field because we don't know what happened to these trials where nothing changed. And I strongly believe that we need to know about every single DBS application for neuropsychiatric disorders, because then we can ask, what was the outcome? That's why we really are pushing for a comprehensive study registry of neuropsychiatric DBS, where even single cases have to be prospectively registered, where the investigator would say, we, pl we plan to stimulate area X in the brain for the in indication Y, and that's our hypothesis. And then other researchers can go back and ask this researcher what was the outcome. He doesn't necessarily need to publish it, but he needs to tell what the outcome is. That's the only way how we can secure a safe development of this field. And just in summary, I think there's a big chance that DBS is the most revolutionary change in clinical psychiatry of the last 30 years. We had new medications, but none of them would establish a revolution in psychiatry. DBS, however, might be. And in order to safeguard this very positive development for our patients, we need to tread carefully in ethical realms, think about what we do, what the, what the impact is, in order to safeguard this development for patients and society. Professor Schöpfler, is there a risk to consider depression only as a neurological condition not considering all the social implications related to it? Oh yes, absolutely. As opposed to Parkinson's associated tremor, which is the most widely used indication, as you know, about 80,000 patients worldwide have been implanted with DBS for this indication. Depression is an altogether much more complex disorder, where you have slower and more complex treatment outcomes. Depression certainly has a neurobiological basis. We know that today, but there are many psychosocial factors involved with depression too. So we need to very, very carefully establish eligibility of patients. We need to analyze what contributed and contributes to their depression right now. And we need to take into account that a symptomatic improvement uh, doesn't change their environment. So. It's absolutely mandatory that when we do DBS to, to the, our patients, we do psychotherapy too, in order to help them um, to cope with the suddenly changed world. And that's a completely new category of psychotherapeutic uh, clinical therapy, um, just working in conjunction with DBS. It has been long acknowledged that, at least in severe cases of depression, you cannot treat with drugs, medications, or ECT alone. You need an integrative approach, taking into account 
very different treatments and always in a mandatory way psychotherapy too. Depression is the most severe disorder humanity knows, but um, and it's one of the most or, or the more complex disorders too, and there are no simple approaches. That's a real danger of the field that some patients and society might think, oh, let's switch a button and the depression is gone. This expectation is true for neurological indications, but certainly not for psychiatric indications. And we need to make this difference clear. And if a Parkinson's patient suddenly stops his tremor uh, after the onset of stimulation, this is an image which, which is absolutely not true for patients with depression or OCD. Thank you.